Hello besties and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Nomi. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing another Karamo Show episode, this time in a lot more detail. This episode of the Karamo Show is called I'm Paralyzed and My Daughter is Downright Cruel. So before we get into this video, I do have to say this has got to be one of the most shocking episodes that I've ever seen on Karamo Show to date. Not only was the story of what this family went through absolutely tragic and heartbreaking, but more so what the daughter has been going through and how she's handling it. And I know it sounds insane just based off of the title of the episode that I'm empathizing with the daughter, but trust me, when we get into the story, you're going to completely understand why we should have sympathy and empathy for this child. There's a lot more things at play than what initially meets the eye. So the episode starts off with the mother, Chloe, telling the story of how her and her children were viciously attacked during a home invasion that resulted in her being paralyzed from the waist down and her son, 11 years old at the time, being hit twice in his legs. From that moment on, her life as well as the lives of her three children were forever altered. At the time of the incident, her eldest daughter, Mei, Mei was only eight, and her youngest child was a baby who was only a few weeks old. This was a terrible, horrific incident that I think that most normal people could never possibly imagine going through, let alone surviving it. And it's for this reason that I sympathize with Chloe very, very heavily. And it's also for this reason that I can completely understand where she's coming from. However, this was not the end of this traumatic incident. Understand that this person was eventually apprehended and he was charged for the incident. But that doesn't stop the lasting effects that Chloe and her children suffered through later on. From then on, Chloe had to adjust to living with her new body as well as the trauma of being harmed so viciously in the place that she called her home. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever looked into quadrupelia or paraplegia, you would know that oftentimes, even if limbs are no longer able to be used or they have been amputated for X, Y, Z reason, people will have dreams that they are able to use those limbs. And sometimes they'll wake up and in a groggy state, they will attempt to use those limbs, not realizing that those limbs are gone. And it often results in them hurting themselves or restarting their depressive state all over again because it's day after day getting into this blissful state where you're sleeping and you're not aware of these things. And then you wake up and the pain and misery starts all over again. And on top of that, Chloe and her family were already living in a not so great environment aka the hood. With that comes a heightened level of sensitivity, which is more so being in a state of survival on a constant basis. And with that being said, and Chloe's reaction to these things, which we will get into later, made me think that more than likely she had been in a state of survival before this incident took place, which only made it more traumatized because this incident meant that she could no longer physically defend herself in the way that she would need to in order for her to feel comfortable or to feel any level of security. In fact, her being paralyzed would have more than likely put her in a heightened state of survival because now she's trying to defend herself in a world where she knows she definitely does not have the upper hand. As she gets to the end of her introduction, she does share with us that she actually got to the point that she no longer wanted to be here. She didn't want to live anymore. When I first got shot, I was very like, you know, mean, like I didn't even want to be here. I didn't want to be here. I was going through something. And that she would have much rather have been taken out with the bullets that hit her. And I can imagine that most of us wouldn't even know where to start with trying to adjust to that new life, as well as still trying to raise three young children in a depressive state that you yourself are not going through alone, on top of knowing that your eldest child was also hit right along with you. From my understanding, it was not specified whether she and her children received any sort of counseling, but it is obvious more than now that they really, really do need it. Although she may have survived her incident and her children did as well, they were not mentally nor emotionally left unscathed. And what truly lets us know this 
is the nature of the relationship between Chloe and her daughter, Melon. Melon is only 14 years old and she's being brought to the Karamo show because of her disrespect and attitude towards her mother. And not only that, but because she has been suspended and kicked out of school for fighting. And she has a generally nasty mouth. At this point, Chloe is still speaking to Karamo and they really do connect on this point about how sometimes when you're receiving constant calls from schools, you're getting police knocking on your door and things like that regarding your child, it can really make you start to dislike your child. Now, I myself cannot argue with this. I didn't really get in trouble in school like talking about it, but I could only imagine how off my parents would have been if they were constantly getting calls about me not acting right fighting being disrespectful and generally just acting a complete damn fool in school first of all the verbal shaming and critiquing would have been enough to put me in an emotional state of distress not only that but I probably would have been in a puddle of tears on the floor before any hands would have ever even been put on me but imagine what it must have felt like as a child who is hardened on the exterior because of what you went through because of the type of environment you're living in that kind of nagging and words and critiques doesn't really phase that child as much as it probably would have if she were being reprimanded for the first time and to know that your parent was in a state where they could not put hands on you no matter what they said no matter how deep the words cut they were in a state where they couldn't touch you she can't touch you and you know, if you really wanted to, you could put hands on her and be out the door before she could even call the police. I mean, you've already been fighting in school. You've been fighting people who may have been bigger than you, who may have been older than you, who may have been stronger than you, who had a reputation of being battered. So what would be the deterrent to stop that child from knowing that when it comes to discipline, there's not very much her mother could do to her? So what would be the solution for a child who's been reprimanded over and over again, who has fought countless people, who has a hardened exterior, but is still a child on the inside? What would deter her from thinking that if she behaved in that exact same manner with her quadriplegic mother, that she wouldn't win? I don't really have the answers for that. But I do want to emphasize that these are all thoughts that was running through my mind as I was watching this episode. Because you have to delve deeper than what's on the surface. You have to look at the actual structure of what her familial relations are like. You have to really break that down and understand not only how she's interacting with her mother, but how she interacts with the world around her and how that determines her behavior. And on top of all of that, you have to consider her emotional state. Now, there's a point that I really want to drive and I'm not excited to be having this conversation. It's not something that I want to proudly boast about and, and have this conversation plastered everywhere. But it is something that needs to be talked about, which is that when you're growing up in the hood, you're growing up in a not so friendly environment. You're not going to speak with kind and soft words. You're not going to be emotionally aware. Being emotionally aware in the hood is going to get you beat up. That does not work. You have to talk with a harsh tone. You have to deter people with the way that you speak so that it doesn't get to the point where they're trying to put hands on you a lot of times. The unspoken truth is if you talk enough shit and you talk it well enough, you will never have to put hands on people to back it up. They'll be afraid to ever mess with you in the first place. And don't think that Chloe, Melon's mother, wasn't the exact same way. That's part of the reason why her losing her physical capabilities is eating her up so badly. Karamo even mentions that later in the episode when Chloe goes over the most harsh words that her daughter has ever said to her. Now I feel like I'm fighting another battle for my daughter's life. We was arguing and then she said, stand on it. Oh, I forgot you can't. So that was the hurtfulest thing she ever said to me. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Karamo even mentions that one of the reasons that Chloe is so angry with her daughter for pointing that fact out to her is because that was one of the things she prided herself on. Chloe prided herself on having this ability to be firm, to be strong and be able to defend herself if necessary. She could stand. She had the ability to defend herself physically where her mouth couldn't. And now she is left 
was not having the ability to express herself through her physicality. Now she has to use her emotional intelligence in her words. And that's not a strong suit in the hood. You don't get anywhere but beat up when you try to talk like that and have some sense about yourself in the hood. That is not her strong suit. She is having to start over and learn not only how to deal with her new physical state, but she has to learn how to conduct herself differently than what she's known all her life. And it's clearly something that she feels uncomfortable with because a lot of times she won't even notice how brutally she's talking to her daughter. No, I'm not like, okay, yeah. so I'll make sure with you hit me with a bottle. Oh, and what you talking about? I did not, bro. You ever lie on me? I'm not lying. I'm sorry. I would never accept it because you said that to me because all I do is tell you to clean me. But this is the norm for her. She is trying to do what she used to be able to do, which is use her mouth before she had to use her hands. But now her threat of using her hands is not anywhere as significant as it was before she became paralyzed. And one of the reasons why I wanted to zero in on this is because later in the episode, she says that if she could stand, she bets Melon would not talk to her in the way that she does. And she, all she says, I'm in a wheelchair, yeah, she gonna do this in a wheelchair, in a wheelchair. Yeah, all you pop, like, if I was standing up, first of all, doing none of this. You don't know that. You don't know that. So what does that tell you? Her physicality was her threat. If she couldn't get her daughter in line by verbally threatening her, she was going to correct her physically, if you get my drift. And let's not act like we don't understand. We don't know. We know. We know. Many of y'all have probably grown up with that exact same threat looming over your head because that is usually the last resort that parents have for trying to get their kids in line. And now that option is completely taken away from her. She also tells Karamo that she feels that no one respects her from that chair. It changed respect. In what way do you feel like it changed respect? Because they don't respect me from this chair. They don't listen to anything that I say. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is that I think that Chloe is actually projecting her own inner thoughts about herself. She doesn't respect herself from that chair. That's why she's looking so hard outside of herself for other people to respect her. Because it would validate her and make her feel a little bit better about her current situation. Maybe she could get back to a normal state of being. She is not there yet. She has not healed from the fact that she's been put in a situation where she's lost a good chunk of her physical capabilities. That is not something that she's managed to get over. And truth be told, we don't know if she's ever truly going to get over it. Think about it. Would you be able to get over it if becoming a quadriplegic was something that was not of your own doing? Would you be able to get over it if you were dealt a hand that you never asked for that from your perspective at the time completely ruined your life because I don't think I would so make no mistakes here no one's judging Chloe for her emotions going through that situation in fact I feel terribly sorry for her that's horrible to go through something like that and then to have to try to pick up the pieces and move on kind of as though nothing happened now, while I do think the context in which Milan said what she said was completely messed up, she told no lies. It was harsh, it was cruel, and it was kicking a dog that was already down. But this is where you have to remember that Milan is only 14. She is a 14-year-old child, and she survived that incident too. Not only is she just a child, but who do you think had to assume the role of caregiver while the mother was still going through her emotionally depressive state. She was already injured. The son was also injured, having been hit in both of his legs. Who do you think had to assume those responsibilities in order to keep the family functioning as great as she could? The youngest baby, of course, couldn't do anything. She was helpless. The mother, dealing with such a tragedy that overtook her life and changed it all in a matter of a few minutes. She was in no mental state, nor physical state, to take care of the household. Who do you think had to do it? It was Melon. She had to assume those responsibilities. She had to take on the emotional burden of trying to understand why her mom was being so cruel to her with her tone of voice and how she was speaking. 
she had to try to understand why her brother is injured in a way that they could have never done on their own. She had to empathize with that. She had to understand she had to grow up when she wasn't ready. This is what Melon is upset about. This is what she is going through behind the scenes. This is why Melon feels like she can do whatever she wants to do because she's already had to take on adult responsibilities that should have never been bestowed upon her to begin with. And again, that is not to blame Chloe because this is not her fault that these that these crazy events took place. Even as the adult, who could imagine going through such a terrible incident and having to turn around and take care of business as best you can while you're dealing with your own depression about your body being forever altered in a way that can't be fixed? On top of knowing that your eldest child was also injured and could have lost his life. On top of knowing that both your other children, although they were not physically injured, they could have been. Although they were not physically injured, they were emotionally injured. But you still have to try to turn around and pick up the pieces. Who could imagine that? Who could say that they have a good plan for how that's going to work out? We haven't even heard anything about her extended family maybe lending a hand. We don't even know if she has extended family. Who could imagine going through something like this and doing what's right 100% of the time? No one can. So I want to keep reiterating that I am not blaming Chloe. I am not. Life is hard enough being a single mother, but to have went through all of that on top of it, and then to have your eldest daughter acting out in such a way that you're probably concerned for her safety, but you just don't know how to just say that. I'm not blaming her. And I don't want any of you to either. Even then, Chloe still concedes that she was not a great mother all of the time. She admits that she said things to her children that she had, should not have said. I was very, like, you know, mean. Like, I didn't even want to be here. Mm. So I was a certain kind of way where, you know, they probably could turn somebody away from me. But like I said, I didn't want to be here. I was going through something. So I feel like right now I'm kind of trying to redeem myself with them a little bit. And as the only child who suffered no physical injuries and was old enough to handle some responsibilities, who do you think took the brunt of it? Who do you think had to deal with her mother's mood swings? Who do you think had to, who do you think had to rationalize why all of this had to happen and still chip in and help take care of the home? It was Melon. She had to deal with that and you wonder why she's talking with such vitriol in her tone. You're wondering why she's cursing up a storm. You're wondering why she's being so cruel to other kids. She's fighting. She's, she's being disrespectful. You wonder why when she's mimicking exactly what was done to her at the age of eight. Those are still crucial developmental years for a child's emotional stability. And that's what she witnessed from her mother. So that's what she mimics. But the point that Chloe is missing is that the ugliness that she sees coming out of her daughter is not for nothing. The ugliness that's coming out of Melon is pain. It's hurt. It's fear. It's anger. All of which is completely normal for a 14 year old child to be expressing after having gone through the terror of a home invasion that resulted in her mom being paralyzed, her brother being injured severely, and the home dynamic being completely altered forever. That is what Karamo was trying to convey to Chloe throughout this entire episode. But Chloe is still in such a heightened emotional state that she cannot hear him right now. She can't hear that she's still hurting over the fact that she lost her legs. She's never gonna walk again. And I a thousand percent agree with Karamo that there is no way that this relationship will ever start to be mended where Chloe isn't going to have to be the one to initiate and take the lead in doing so. And before I end this video, I really, really want to say this. Melan is a strong, strong young lady. She is beautiful. She is smart. She is adorable. I just... The whole time I was watching this episode, I just wanted to hug her. I just want to hug her. That baby has been through so much in such 
a short time. She's been through so much and she deserves to be loved on. She deserves to be understood and to have somebody allow her to vent out those frustrations, those pains, those hurts without being judged like she's a bad kid. She's not a bad kid. She went through some bad things and she's expressing herself in a way that makes her look bad. That is a child that has been traumatized. That is a child that needs compassion and understanding and she needs grace. She needs to be given grace. She deserves better than what she went through. And I hope that she is able to indulge herself in some creative outlets to help her express that anger and that pain and that fear before it consumes her and, and puts her on track to ruin her life before it's even started. I hope she's able to get help and to start to mend those hurt feelings because if she doesn't, she's more than likely going to be one of the people that we end up talking about later on and how far her life has spiraled out of control. And I would hate for that to happen because she has so much potential. You can clearly see the girl is bright. She is smart. She's bubbly. She has so much potential to be somebody in life. If she's given the proper tools, the nurturing, if she is tended to, all of this could turn around for her. And I really sincerely hope it does. People could learn so much from simply having empathy for children and the hardships that they go through. People will think for some reason, maybe it's because children don't have as big vocabulary as adults do. Maybe it's because they don't have the same responsibilities that adults do. For that reason, a lot of people seem to think that children don't have issues that keep them up at night. People don't seem to realize that despite the fact that children will still go out and play, that they go through emotional pain that scars them for life. But they forget that once upon a time, they were children too. They had issues that hurt them emotionally that they felt like they couldn't talk to their parents about because their parents didn't understand where they were coming from. Their parents couldn't hear them. Their parents brushed them off because they felt like, you ain't got nothing to worry about, you're a kid, like go sit elsewhere. And those unresolved issues are the very same reasons why people act the way that they do in their adult life. Yet we're still not having sympathy and understanding for children who are simply trying to express and alleviate themselves of pain that they've gone through. I truly could go on and on breaking down everything that I thought as I watched this episode, but then this video would probably be like two and a half hours long and ain't nobody got time for that. That's too much editing for little old me. So I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all really enjoyed it because I really, really enjoyed bringing some insight into what's actually going on emotionally in this situation. I'm not saying that I have the answers because baby, <laughs> I don't, but I do have speculation. I do have eyes. I have a heart and I have emotional intelligence. And so I hope that you all gathered something from this. Maybe it relates to you in somewhere. Maybe it relates to someone you know. And if that is the case, don't hesitate to show this video some love. We could use a lot more of these types of videos going around instead of negative banter. And so with that, I'm going to end this video here. Thank you all so much for watching once again. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Comment down below your thoughts on this situation, whether you agree or disagree. I'm fine with either. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I will be posting more videos like this and I want to see you all in the next one. Don't forget, if you ever want to send me a story or you have any recommendations, aside from commenting below, you can also email me at theteawithnomi at gmail.com. You can also find me on TikTok, also at theteawithnomi. And now you can find me on Facebook, at theteawithnomi. So with that being said, thank you all once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!